So hello everyone, thanks for attending me this afternoon, my presentation. So my name is uh, yes, my name is Chong Liu and I now a postdoc in the Telecom Paris. I just got my PhD de uh, degree in the July this year in, in Sahel in France. So today's topic is one of part of my PhD project. The title is the coverage and the stability analysis of serial networks with pump-out traffic. And thanks again for your attention. So in this topic, we give the performance analysis of large scale like dynamic networks with resource allocation. In order to capture the position randomness, we introduced the statistical damage, which is widely used in the last 10 years. It allows us to statistically evaluate the spatial interactions between users and base stations, and to explicitly optimize the SNR distribution under some certain assumptions. Besides, we can access the network performance on average over all possible realizations rather than uh, evaluating the performance of a deterministic uh, uh, system of toploid networks. So on the other hand, in order to capture the network dynamistic, we introduce a Markovan decision process, which allows us to evaluate the uh, service latency, the QD link and the network stability issues. The difficulty here is uh, the interface is seen by a user will depend on the space of all queues in the network. So the first uh, question we would like to answer is uh, what is the coverage and the stability characteristic of the serial networks is temporal traffic? We give a tractable analytical framework that can capture the grouping between the spatial distributions of the nodes and the temporal uh, dynamics. Also, we characterize the network stability region. So I will start with the baseline model in the serial networks without any dynamicities. So in this finger, the base station locations are modeled as a homogeneous person point process and each user will associate it with, its, uh, with its nearest base station. The small scale gaming in each link is identical independent exponential distribution and the large scale feeding follows the uh, power law. The uh, signal to interferences and noise ratio is the ratio between the designed signal to the noise plus the aggregated interfaces. Uh, here B1 is uh, the position for the uh, desired transmission to the origin point. So by the Selenix theorem, we can add a new reference transmitter with its receiver at the origin. So what is the performance of this uh, uh, typical link? I will, I will introduce two SNR distributions. The most common one is the coverage probability. Uh, I put it in the second line. The coverage probability actually is a random choosing user can achieve our target as an theta. It can be also understand as a success transmission. And uh, uh, in some articles, they um, define as an voltage probability as one minus the P. Uh, PC theta here. The, a more fine guaranteed uh, distribution called the meta distribution, or also uh, used to criticize the SR distribution. So it will give a fine guarantee information because it uh, will give the SNR variabilities on the, some particular points in a, on an area. So for a stationary and aerotic point process, and the typical users at origin, the meta distribution is a uh, two parameter SNR distributions. So, in this uh, definition, the first part is a conditional coverage probability. We fix the point to process uh, to have, have this inside part. But the second part is to give the distribution of this conditional coverage probability. The, there is a relationship between the meta distribution and coverage probability. 
the coverage probabilities on that uh, actually is the, the inter integral from zero to one of uh, this uh, variable u here. And uh, we cannot uh, have the same information on the opposite. So due to the accuracy of the point process, the meta distribution can be interpreted as a fraction of the links in each realization that can achieve an SNR of theta with probability at least u. And this is the information we can have from the meta distribution. So recall the downlink cellular networks with four load assumption. The point distributed base stations and users, the cell bonds here are formulated as a volcanic tessellations. I thought the coverage probability depends on the SNR threshold and the noise. You can see that uh, actually the coverage probability is decreasing when the theta is increasing and when the noise is increasing. The third figure here, I plot the meta distribution depend on the different theta and the threshold for the conditional coverage probability here. As theta, uh, the, the error direction here is uh, when theta, uh, the SNR threshold is lower. You can see that the, the meta distribution at theta u will convergence to one when u goes to one and uh, it uh, will goes to zero when u goes to zero. It's a CCDF of uh, conditional coverage probability actually. So one drawback of this baseline model is uh, it is actually a pessimistic view of the aggregated interferences because uh, uh, it always assumes that all the transmitters in the serial networks are all present all the time. So it will give the highest level of interfer interferences and actually give a lowest, uh, lower bound of the coverage probability. So if we introduce the dynamicity of the networks, uh, the place shaking here will be two kind of approaches that combines the statistical geometry and pure learning series here. The first I call the high mobility network approaches. So in these uh, networks, uh, users arrive to a compensate set according to a point process with uh, density lambda in user in, in area and the second and each user will catch, uh, will bring a file need to be transmitted. If this uh, file has been transmitted uh, successfully, this user will disappear in this area. <laughs> so the stability is here can be studied using the rate conservation principles or Lyapunov function method. I method. Uh, Uh, for us, we studied the second uh, kind of uh, dynamic systems, which called the static person networks. So in the static uh, person networks, the receiver's location are fixed during the time evolution, and each transmitter will hold a buffer to uh, store the accumulated packets. So if the packet cannot transmit successfully, it will be stored in the packet. The unstable things here comes from that uh, if SNR is always quite low uh, compared to the traffic arrival rate, this uh, buffer will go to infinity in the end. So the difficulties here is the correlation shape of the interferences that persist among the different time slots. So there are also several articles studied the static personal network approaches. Like uh, they study the delay distribution and the stability considerations of different transmission protocols. So, uh, however, this part of work either they consider on the average performance, like the coverage probability, and didn't go further on the fine guaranteed information. All they use very simple assumptions to avoid this kind of correlation shifts between the different uh, time slot and different uh, transmitters. I will give a simple case uh, example of the Q correlation shift here. Here we have two peer transmitters and receivers, uh, tr transmitter and receiver. T1 has a, 
T1 is a transmitter and it's to desire the receiver is R1 and the T2 is another transmitter, it's to desire the receiver is R2. You can see that link R T1, R1 has a longer transmission link and a shorter interference link. And the occurrence will determine the activities of transmitter T1 and T2. That means if uh, the buffer is empty, the transmitter is actually silenced. And if buffer is not active, the transmitter is active. So in this case, in this simple case, the T1 will suffer more from pass loss and interferences compared with the uh, T2 R2 pair. So even given a similar traffic load for T1 and T2, T1 will tend to vacate its queue more slowly because it always uh, uh, experienced a bad SNR level compared with the, the T1 R1 pair. So we generalize this simple uh, case to a uh, cellular networks like the transmitter uh, model according to a person point process and each transmitter will host an infinite buffer in this network. Packet arrival uh, follows the backward distribution at each transmitter and the packet departure will depend on the dynamic SNR at each time slot. We also consider the retransmission schemes, which means if uh, a packet cannot transmit successfully, it will be restored in the buffer and waiting for the retransmission unless it can be transmitted successfully. So the topic, uh, you, uh, typical users SNR here compared with the baseline model, we add an indicator function here, beta x and t. So here beta x and t indicates uh, the interference base station x is active at time slot t. And this indicator function will make a link with uh, the q length q buffer with a buffer state of its own. And for each transmitter, the Q model is quite classical. It's the previous uh, buffer length equals to the, uh, the current buffer length equals to the previous buffer length minus the packet departure and amount of packet departure plus the amount of packet arrived. Excuse me. So there is a collection of it's all the downlink. Yes, a downlink. Uh, okay. And so you have one Q per user in the cell. One Q per, uh, per, per user in yes, the cell. Yes. Right? And so interference will be base stations in that case in the interference form. Right? Yes. And, and so, ah, okay. Uh, but your beta X it says, uh, features, I mean, whether if all Qs are empty, then it's inactive. That's what you mean? Yes. And it aggregates all Qs. So there is one Q per user. One, one Q, uh, 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 so. Oh. Is it a global Q or it's a Q per user? It's a global Q, it's a global. Ah, global Q for all users in the, so the aggregate traffic is on all users and. Yeah, we uh, actually in, in each cell we want to choose one user, one here. Okay, and what is the rate out of that queue? It's uh, Shannon's, uh, Shannon's rate. So what, what is the, how, how do you connect the, the rate of the queue to the uh, assignment? Yes, uh, we connect the departure rate uh, with the SNR by if the SNR is larger than the threshold, it can be transmitted successfully. It's zero or one. It's not a rate. Okay, so. It's zero or one. Uh, I see. It's a it's, okay. Because it's a the, slotted, slotted thing. Yes, it's a slotted thing. Uh, Time slotted networks. Time okay. slotted network. It's not continuous. And uh, but then you need, in order to define the key, you need the scheduling. So how do you schedule? I mean, good and bad customers. Uh, so it's five four. Sure. It's five four. Five four. It's five four. It's five four. So considering the typical user receive data at uh, time slot t, we define the dynamic coverage probability as a pound probability. That is, uh, the dynamic SNR is larger than the threshold. Okay. And gamma t, I gave the expression in the previous slide. 
And uh, the stable coverage probability is a little bit complex. Let phi uh, t be the series of the point process along the time, and uh, p t be the coverage probability of the network at t. Under the conditions where the limitation of such series exists, the stable coverage probability is the limitation when time goes to infinity. And the q, uh, we also define q as a probability of the indicator function equals to one. Here, phi, uh, t late phi is the limit of the PPP size, uh, which represents the point process where the active of uh, base stations does not uh, involve this time. Sorry, it goes too fast. Could you repeat? Sorry. So, let me cover this property. So, take the speaker loser. So, we agree that you have all these queues, the single queue per base station. Single queue per base station. And some is 5 4, and some That's customers five. have a very, very bad coverage chance, and others are at all. Yes. 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 I don't okay. need this schedule. And you say PT, ETD? PT, uh, uh, here we still analyze the performance of the typical user at the origin. Ah, okay, right. And this is uh, under the assumption that all, all queues are active, so you forget about this beta, right? Uh, I didn't forget about this beta. This beta is involved in this uh, gamma TPI. Oh, okay. But you say Q is, is, is always active? Um, I don't understand. Uh, I, uh, I, because uh, here, so the dynamic coverage probability is the probability um, at x zero is the position for the associated base station at x zero. We analyze this, the performance of the user in the origin. So the, this uh, receivers serve the base station is x zero. So this is a probability, and we need to assume that X zero is always active, but the other base stations' uh, activities still depend uh -huh. on their Q states. Okay, and what is the difference between the dynamic coverage probability and the stable coverage probability? Oh, sorry, please Yeah, uh, stable coverage probability is uh, the uh, then. Uh, give, give, given an initialization state of the traffic, the network will eventually move to a stable state. The coverage probability of. Uh, uh, so, yeah. if there is a steady state of the whole thing, yes, uh, yes, then yes. that could be the thing to work to. So, you have this infinite dimensional Markov chain with all these queues. Yes. And if it stabilizes, okay. Uh, but perhaps, uh, perhaps, perhaps, this is what is wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Equal to zero. Be, yes. Be, wait, what, what is beta? Uh, oh, P. Right. Your P is close to zero. Uh, okay, no, perhaps not right. So, because, uh, so, but don't you need something conditional here? Because, I mean, what happens is, I mean, your rate is the rate conditional on phi. It should be a meta thing, right? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a meta thing, yeah. Uh, this is just a definition. Ah, okay. This is just a definition. So, so. Okay. So, okay. Sorry. So, um, so yeah, I'm just trying to understand. Thanks. Uh, so, under this two definition, we analyze the uh, two two scenarios. So first is uh, each uh, a transmitter holds an infinite buffer, and the other scenario is each uh, transmitter holds a finite buffer restriction with spin at each transmitters. So the state uh, stable coverage probability is uh, actually in the end is a function of the active probability at uh, uh, randomly chosen uh, transmitters. And this uh, probability is dependent on if the coverage probability is larger or smaller than the arrival rates. It's a segment uh, function here. So for the finite buffer case, 
the stable coverage probability is a function of SNRS ratio, the traffic arrival rate, and the buffer restriction here. So if the if each transmitter holds a buffer restriction, uh, once there will another event happen if a new arrival packet uh, arrive, and the buffer is full, so this new arrival packet need to be dropped. So there will event a uh, pack, uh, packet loss uh, event here. So in the second scenario, we'll also give the expression for the packet loss probability. So in the end, the stable coverage probability is a function, is a fixed point equation of the buffer length and the traffic and density and the SNRS ratio here. So I will explain a bit for the first uh, scenario with the infinite buffer. Learn how to calculate the stable coverage probability. Uh, first, we use an uh, approximation that the temporal interference relationship will have a negligible effect on the transmission success probability when time goes to infinity. <coughs> See, it is uh, this, uh, this expression. Mm. Actually, um, the middle expression has been derivative in the references when the spatial temporal interference relationship and the Joint coverage in serial networks. And they prove that when time goes to infinity, this uh, probability and this probability can be equivalent. And uh, the uh, temporal interferences correlationship has a negative ne effect on the transmit success probability. So the number of packets for a randomly chosen base station can be modeled using a discrete time microvention here. Uh, the state uh, is uh, the state here zero one two three is the number of packets in the buffer, and if uh, in the state zero the base station is silence, and in the other state the base station is active. And here X is the traffic arrival uh, rate, and the, mm, P P here is uh, traffic departure rate. Links to the stable coverage probability according to our settings because uh, we said if the SNR is larger or smaller than the threshold, is, uh, there will be one or zero packet uh, can leave this queue or not. So if, when uh, P is larger than the uh, arrival rate, the stable solution can be solved uh, using the pi P equals to pi, and here pi includes the stationary. Uh, distribution for the number of packets in the uh, uh, in the buffer, and when p is smaller than the threshold, the q length will goes to the infinity. So in the end, you are related to, to a fixed point equation between the stable coverage probability and the pi zero. Pi zero is a probability to be in at this state. And this uh, in the first uh, in the left uh, figure, I plot uh, the stable coverage probability depend on the threshold uh, in the infinite buffer restriction. Uh, to do the experiment, we let the network initialize in different uh, conditions. Uh, the red, red, red the red line with circle is a light traffic initialization and the uh, Blue with uh, triangles is the four load initialization states. After that, we give the network with the same traffic intensities. We can see that the stable coverage of uh, the coverage probability will eventually convergence to the same stable coverage probability here, no matter what kind of initialization states here. And the expression for the stable coverage probability corresponding to our analysis in the previous. So in the right uh, curve, I plot the coverage probability and the packet loss probability uh, depend on the SNS threshold, the buffer restriction, and the traffic arrival intensity here. 
uh, coverage probability is decreasing when the traffic uh, SNR threshold is uh, increasing and the uh, corresponding that the pack loss probability will increase if we increase the, the SNR threshold here. Uh, here, the, each uh, coverage probability are corresponding to a uh, packet loss probability here. Just another question on the uh, apparently, uh, there is not a lot of difference in the hidden finite buffer and the buffer in terms of the value. Am I right? Or, uh, I mean, the, 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 the curve, the, 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 the the curve is, uh, is about the same shape and uh, at about the same uh, value. So, is a uh, infinite buffer a good approximation uh, of infinite buffer? Uh, yeah, if uh, b goes to infinity, the, yeah. the final buffer, uh, the expression but, uh, of the final buffer. The value is... b uh, for which we can consider that it is almost uh, it's very close to uh, the, the case of infinite buffer. What, what, what is the, 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 this value for you? Yeah, this is a really good question. I didn't put a, or another finger here, uh, which I plot the average QD. Uh, uh, we can see that the, the average number of packets in the buffer. We can see that if network is stable, I mean, the average uh, transmit success probability is larger than the arrival rate, the number of packets will stay in a relatively low value like smaller than uh, 10 or 20 packets uh, in, in my uh, settings. And otherwise, if network is unstable, the uh, buffer goes to infinity very uh, quickly by the exponential ex increasing. So just to be clear, what I did is, if I understood well that uh, for the infinite curve, the, the curve is this one. Uh, yes. Uh, this one is, uh, for example, this one is a bit far but, uh, the, for the triangle, but for the, the other, they are very close to the same section uh, visually. Yeah. And I mean, uh, for the value I see here and here, it's about uh, the same. So uh, it was, uh, it, this is why I, say, I said that, except for the triangles, for the other points, uh, it's very close to the, to the for, uh, visually to the, the case of this is, It was my point, in fact. Uh, uh, are there some, uh, so it would be interesting to know uh, the, uh, in terms of modeling uh, to know that when uh, the buffer is I know I don't know the value uh, if you need buffer modeling so uh, you mean what uh, you understand what I mean I, I, I understand what you um... mean I was just uh, remarking a question about the, when we can we say that if you need buffer modeling is okay <laughs> so to study the stable region, we introduced the concept of epsilon stable regions. This definition is based on the meta distribution. We let the uh, arrival rate exceed the arrival rate of the traffic. So for any uh, epsilon. Uh, in yellow and one, the action stable region is the such that the arrival rate set, the proportion of unstable cases no larger than the epsilon here. And here inside, this is uh, the transmit success probability, and uh, actually here the traffic intensity. And uh, the action stable region is the uh, acceptable arrival rate. Uh, and to um, satisfy the inside condition here. We define the uh, XCB, the supreme value of this region as the critical arrival rate. And we define a uh, lower and upper bound for this uh, region. Here, the excavation is taken over the channel feeding and the Markovan process dynamics. Uh, the, the arrival rate sets 
is the proportion of unstable cases not larger than epsilon? <laughs> In your variable, if you say it's on the dummy, it's per cell or per user? Uh, per cell. Per, per cell. cell. And so if there are 1,000 users in the cell, you would then decrease the so there, there would be 1,000 users in the cell, but we consider that uh, each us. base station um, connect with uh, one user in this case. So there is no in-cell interfaces, on cell interfaces. Right, so I, I then mix that because I thought we were serving all users in the cell at a given time. You pick the one that said the queue is 5 4. Yeah. <clears throat> so you serve the user ahead of the cell, right? ahead of the queue. But so there is not a rate per, per user, it's a rate per cell. Rate per cell, rate per cell, yes. Rate per cell. The rate at the base station size and not the rate at the real time. And your notion of stability, then, so I'm trying to pass this one. So, uh, so it could be that the user head of the queue is at the edge of the cell, so these conditions are extremely bad, which would be taken care of by your condition of fact, right? But yes. What you want is that this happens for. Uh, a small enough proportion of cells or uh, of, uh, that well i'm trying to understand this thing so you want that the chance that the rate average rate uh, function phi over time be less than the arrival rate which is uh, the and you want this to be just this thing to be small right I think you make a little bit mistake about my system model. Oh, okay. So, so in, in, in my system, so the base station is uh, generalized according to the person point process, yeah. and the user density is very high, uh, and the join according to another person point process. So, in that case, in each cell, there will be multi users. But uh, in our case, we consider that. Uh, the base station serve the different users using the different uh, resource uh, uh, using uh, the frequency resource. So it uh, looks like in each cell there is only one user. Oh, there is one user per cell. Yes. Oh, okay. But but uh, this user is randomly choosing from in this cell. Okay. So it's equivalent to consider the traffic arrival rate at user or traffic arrival rate at the base station. We, we see the, we, we, this definition is the, um, I think, to see the performance of the typical links uh, around the origin. Okay, so it will still be the fraction of cells in which the queue is a stable. Right? Yes, yes exactly, exactly. Okay, there will always be a fraction of cells where it behaves well, even if there's one customer, yes. because the cell is big and it's the yes. guys at the end exactly. of the cell, right? exactly. And so it's intrinsic, and, uh, uh, and, and then uh, this would also be uh, a spatial average of the number of cells we need. But uh, okay, you, uh, you you don't look at the uh, bandwidth sharing in the cell. Uh, no, I know. Uh, it is one resource per user. And, uh, yeah, one resource per user. So first, uh, we give a, a bounce for the critical arrival rate uh, based on the previous definition by considering. Uh, to modify the systems. The lower bound is a for loop system where all the transmitters keep transmitting all the time. So in this case, the indicator functions equals to one and uh, close to the baseline model, as I mentioned before. And the upper bound, we consider a favorable system without retransmissions. So in this case, each transmitter will be active with uh, 
the same probability of traffic rivalries. So in, in this to modify the systems, we can tick off this uh, indicator, uh, this uh, uh, variable t, and tick off these limitations, and have uh, the expression uh, for the critical, the up and lower bound for the critical rival rates. The derivation here is similar to the um, meta distribution derivation. And for upper long is only a simple screening from the original person point process. So um, uh, another point we give approximation of this equation stable regions, since it is very difficult to have the original derivations of this, this definition, because we do not have the uh, the expression when the Markov entry works in the constant state. <clears throat> so we ignore the constant state of the Markov entry model before, and the epsilon stable region can be approximated uh, as uh, the, when the conditional coverage probability goes to infinity. And smaller than the arrival rate, and this probability is smaller than a uh, predefined uh, pre uh, threshold uh, epsilon here. So we can give a, a expression for this definition. It will, we can see that uh, the approximation is dependent on this expedition of Q, which is the average uh, active probability for a randomly chosen interferon base station. And this is a statement uh, uh, function if the conditional coverage probability is larger than the arrival rate, has one expression, and otherwise it's equals to one. <laughs> the steps to have this uh, expression is uh, first we need to calculate the conditional coverage probability, uh, conditional success, uh, transmit success probability, then to have the B moments of this transmit success probability and uh, in the end use the data plus theorem. So in the left figure, I plot the upper and just plot the upper and the lower bound of these two modified systems. Here, the lower bound uh, is corresponding to the followed case, the upper bound here corresponding to the system without any transmission. We can see that uh, under some network configurations, this gap between the upper and lower bound is quite huge. So it's meaningful to evaluate the uh, network stable region using our approximations. And so in this figure, I plot the simulation and the approximation also the upper and lower bound. We can see that if uh, the SNI detection threshold is uh, quite uh, small, the transmitter will always uh, tend to be success. The critical arrival rate <coughs> will close to the upper bound. And if uh, theta equals to zero dB, <coughs> the critical arrow, uh, if uh, the critical arrival rate will close to the upper bound when uh, uh, epsilon is small, which means allows the uh, more unstable queues in the network, and it will go uh, close to the lower bound when the epsilon is uh, large. And this point is, uh, comes from uh, the segment function here. <laughs> so after a uh, criticize the uh, first question, the coverage and the stability uh, region of the networks, or we go to the we go to the second question, what is the stability cost characteristic of network operations according to the transmission policy? Uh, why we go to, uh, in this part of work, we go to the reinforcement learning. 
So why we go to the warehouse learning? Because the characteristic of the stable region by considering the resource allocation is very difficult to obtain uh, because the independence between the uh, geometry and uh, the allocation strategy and the dynamicity is here. And the dynamic uh, nature of the network, this is still perfectly described by the Markov and decision process. And further, the reverse learning technology can be used. So we explore the reverse learning for the user of uh, interest here. And the transmission policy can we can we find that uh, the transmission policy training by the reverse learning can reach the same stable region as a baseline policy we mentioned before, but with a lower transmission cost here. So a reinforcement learning framework is actually the agent to your interact with its environment by doing some action and the environment to your feedback the uh, state and the reward function to the agent. By this kind of uh, interactions uh, between the agent and the environment, the agent will eventually learn an uh, action policy that can maximize the community <laughs> reward in a long run. So a po policy here is a function from the state space to the action space. An action is uh, to be taken in each, each uh, state. I will, I will give some states of art to uh, study these two kinds of works. Uh, the reinforced learning has been uh, widely used uh, uh, not widely. So the rest of learning in recent years has been used to study the dynamic systems. <coughs> uh, for example, the energy efficiency system and the resource allocation problems and caching problems. <coughs> However, these uh, three works I uh, mentioned here, they always study uh, deterministic networks, which means in their system settings, there uh, might be two base stations and uh, 20 users in the networks and uh, does not consider about the, the randomness between the user and, and uh, uh, base stations. <coughs> so on the other hand, the uh, as I mentioned, the statistical geometry gave a formal, uh, gave a mathematical uh, framework to analyze the SNI distributions and the network stability issues. So there are not many uh, articles con uh, considered to combine the reverse millennium and statistical geometry framework together. <coughs> I put one resource uh, in this uh, article seven. The also studies the uh, um, resource allocation problem for small scale networks using a game perspective. <coughs> but they didn't uh, set any cues uh, in the network. The inconvenience here is the reference learning problem is modeled in the discrete space always and the statistical geometry problems modeled in a continuous and uh, statistic space. The, also the scalability problems because in the, uh, in the statistic geometry problems, they are always involved the uh, hundreds and thousands uh, transmitters and receivers in the networks. It will increase the state space of reinforcement learning quite huge here. Yeah. Is there anything related work on reinforcement learning? So I didn't understand what you mean by the deterministic case, because reinforcement learning, in any case, you have to learn. So you have, there is a training phase. And I guess in this yeah. training phase, you don't always change one scenario. You use a lot of scenarios. Yes. Maybe they come out from the same probability distribution, but you have a lot of scenarios. Yeah, I understand the. So, I... in which sense do you need that? So, in my opinion, the important learning cannot be in a deterministic state because there is a need of the phase of learning. So, what do you mean by saying that they are deterministic? So my mean of deterministic is uh, the top and the geometry. 
so they have changed yes okay yes okay. this for, for example is uh, if we model the serial networks for the, the based on the statistical geometry the transmitters and receivers will always follow some distributions the number of pack the number of these transmitters and the receivers are uh, around them but uh, in the reinforcement learning frameworks uh, at the beginning to start to set a system model uh, the, the for, for example if we study the serial networks the transmitter receivers is always fixed it's not it, follows it, for, some... for one train sample but then you want to train over one million sample, uh, examples these one million things should be different right yes okay so all the, all, also in their case they use stochasticity but in a different way yeah different yeah ways. yeah in a different way that's why we can find the point to combine these two okay. two works okay. thanks for your comment so in order to make the um, problem simplicity we set the state space in three uh, parts the first is the uh, channel states we discretize the snr continuous snr into several regions uh, by uh, several snr threshold and here the buffer state is zero or one indicates if there is something in the buffer and the package arrival process is uh, zero one because we use the family distribution for the packet arrival process. So uh, another element for the Markov and decision process is the immediate cost here. Or we can see the immediate reward uh, for a given time slot. So we consider two kinds of cost. First is the transmission cost. It depends on the action. Oh, I forgot to explain the action. Action space is zero or one indicates if the uh, base station is uh, active or silence. Uh, it can be extended to the multi-power levels, but it will ex uh, uh, turn the state space to a very huge uh, level and makes the uh, L stream convergence quite slow. So we just consider to action here because they, we have uh, hundreds and thousands base station here. Uh, so the <coughs> here the cost function is dependent on the action and the uh, environment state. So if uh, do not transmit, there is no transmission cost. And if uh, uh, transmit, the transmit cost is depend on the state here. Uh, there is another cost uh, called the delay cost. So if you do not transmit, there is no delay cost. And if uh, the uh, if uh, if the if, if the buffer uh, uh, randomly chosen transmitter is not active and uh, it keeps silence, there will be a transmission cost a uh, delay cost here, and this is constant. So the third definition is a transmission success probability. The transmission success probability is uh, increasing with the level of uh, uh, dynamic SIR theory. Here we consider interferences limiting uh, <laughs> scenarios. I'm sorry. <laughs> So my optimization problem is to find the transmission post uh, policy that can minimize the combination of long-term cost. So it, which is uh, to find the policy pi that can minimize the long-term value. This is a value function actually for the Bellman equation. 
And here eta is the discounting factor. Uh, if eta is large, uh, means the agent is more far, far sight and uh, looking for the long-term reward. And if eta is small, uh, it means the agent will look so, uh, very short sight and concentrate on the immediate reward here. So we can transfer this uh, constraint uh, optimization problem as an uh, unconstrained uh, optimization problem by introducing the lifelong multiplier lambda here and solve the and solve the unconstricted MDP by solving its duration problem. So for the fixed uh, Lagrange -like multiplier here, we use the reinforced learning algorithm Q learning and SASA. Uh, to optimize the lambda, we use a sub guarantee uh, statistic algorithm here. So on the other hand, we uh, studied the stable property in this framework. The stable property is uh, defined as the transmit success property is larger than the traffic intensity here. Here, FS is the transmit success property depend on the policy, the transmission policy and the uh, channel data. This is uh, no decreasing with the SNR level. Here, the expedition is taking over the MDTP uh, dynamics and the channel feeding. The stable property is calculated on the PPP processes. So for the baseline policy, uh, here uh, we um, give the big moments uh, of transmit success policy and of course, we can use the Gila class theorem again to have the stable probability here, but uh, the expression is too uh, complex. So we introduce the beta approximations and uh, using the first moment of present success probability and the second moment to give the variance and add that to have the PDF function to approximate the average present success probability and eventually give the stable probability here. And this expression is validated by the simulations here. And the baseline policy means uh, each transmitter, each transmitter transmit when buffer is not tapped, as long as buffer is not tapped. So this is a strategy for the baseline policy. So a reference learning policy, we also gave the B moments of the transmit success probability here. I can see one point is this expression is depend on the training policy pi and the pol training policy here is depend on the network realization and the channel state here in uh, as we defined before. <laughs> To do the experiment, we keep the same uh, uh, simulation parameters as a journal paper published uh, five years ago. They modeled a point-to-point -point system, and in our system, we modeled the serial networks. So in the, this figure, I so here uh, I explain a bit. Uh, so the user base, user density is uh, quite larger than the base station, and the channel coefficient is exponential distributions. Here the discounting factor is zero point nine five, and here is a learning step for the reinforcement learning algorithms. And the base station actions can be on and off. And SNR I divided into three regions uh, uh, with two SNR threshold. We can replace thinking that SNR is in the bad level or middle level and the uh, good level. The transmission cost corresponding to each SNR level is decreasing. So in in the Right side of the finger, we plot the long term average cost according to the traffic arrival rate. I took me 
dimension that each point in this figure I always averaged over the point process. <laughs> so this is the average performance actually. Uh, we can see that uh, the baseline policy does not aware of the traffic intensities. And the reinforcement learning based policies can ju uh, justify its uh, policy, uh, uh, its cost. Uh, cost depend on the traffic intensity here. I mean, if the traffic is light, the reinforcement learning based policy will have a lower cost. And if the traffic is uh, heavy, the uh, cost uh, will increase according to the traffic intensity here. Uh, another interesting result is uh, we give a trade-off between the stability and the total cost. The stability is a, a stable probability. I already gave the expression um, before. And the cost is training according to the real cost of learning. We can see that compared with the baseline policy, the real cost of learning based policy can actually have the same level of stable uh, stable probabilities, however, with a lower cost, especially when the traffic intensity is uh, light here. Uh, the last figure here, I plot the active probability since the uh, action space is uh, on and off a zero and a one. So it's enough to criticize the policy according to the active probability. This is a percentage averaged over the network realizations. Mm -hmm. So in, in this thing, SB is the buffer is FT or not, and SY is, is the traffic arrival events, and SC represents the SNR located in each region, in which region. So SC1 means the the bad SNR condition and SC2 means the middle SNR condition and SC3 means the good SNR condition. So the reference learning based policy gives the information that if uh, uh, a transmitter experience a, a good SNR level and the buffer is not active, it uh, will tend to be active as a probability of one. And if uh, a channel is the in the middle state and the buffer is not active, the transmitter will be active with a probability of 0 0.65 around. And if the channel is very bad and the buffer is empty, the, base, the transmitter will uh, tend to uh, inactive at this, uh, this state. So this is uh, an illustration for our policy. So we go to the conclusions for today's topic. Uh, we describe the stable coverage probability and uh, uh, consider the interactions between the Q states and we give the H stable region analysis based on the meta distribution. And we search for the optimal transmission strategies in PPP serial networks, considering the traffic intensity and the dynamic interferences and channel condition. So for the future works, uh, because uh, in this framework, we consider only the base station at the origin uh, worked uh, as an intelligent agent and the other uh, base station still work as a baseline policy, which means if they have something to transmit, they will transmit. So the next step, we can introduce a multi-agent reinforcement learning to make the problem be symmetric. And also, um, we can use the continuous decision process to model the transmission management problem. Maybe we can find a better tool rather than the reinforcement learning to have the uh, resource allocation in this framework. So thanks, <laughs> thanks for your attention today. Thank you. Yeah.
so I misunderstood the issue, but I thought I can come back to the model that I designed. So if you have now users per cell, which are still in the Poisson point process, uh, it's uh, independent. In big cells, you have many users, and it could be in some cells you don't have enough resources to uh, justify the fact that you look at one user per cell to be left over, right? So the question is whether uh, you can think of expanding your model to, uh, I mean, taking the finite number of resources into account. And then you think that the queues, uh, say, uh, a global queue for all these tables, right? Does it make sense? Finite number of resources. Uh, yeah, you, you, you answer when uh, I had misunderstood you, uh, because you were you didn't the user cells. Yeah. That uh, you were looking at for one resource with one user per cell. Yes. And then you forget about the rest and, and think of that as the problem, right? And then you have a queue, a collection of queues with one user per cell. Yes. But if you look at bandwidth sharing in the usual sense, you, mean, uh, you would have a finite number of resources and you would have to share these resources with users, right? And so then the queuing problem would become different. Uh, also, um, so you mean for some sales, the user actually cannot get, get any resources because yeah, well, resources less, less, less resources for this user because you have to, to TDMA to the user on the downlink. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so, or I mean, the, the extreme case is you have only one resource, and what you had before, you have to share between the users, right, for the set. And so uh, you see a way to extend your uh, thanks for your thanks for your comment so you are here my my system model is a bit identical in order to have the trackable mathematical yeah. derivations that's the point I didn't consider about the finite resource block for each mm -hmm. cell so in my case uh, um, uh, since the user density is quite high uh, compared with uh, uh, the base station densities we uh, we assume that the user in this in this cell will be sure to get the resource And perhaps another question, we, if I get it correct, uh, correctly, this fixed point uh, about the chance of or the other queues to be empty is a uh, heuristic, right? So in fixed, you, you, if you change the self state when it is empty, we're studying some cases, and so this, this is a heuristic, it's not the exact solution. Right? So uh, how does it compare to, uh, I mean, how does this heuristic of this point compare to uh, Restrictive estimation is a tool that means without this uh, kind of heuristic. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't. Um... Yeah, so if I was correctly, you had a fixed point heuristic to assess the chance that the clues are empty. Uh... The details, those are the parameters. Yes. Right. But this is a heuristic, so sort of mean heuristic. Right? So if you, if you look at the exact dynamics of the stream system, uh, so, how does it compare to this heuristic? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't uh, consider what this. Um... <laughs> Um, maybe a clarification yeah. for that question. Um, in the case where you don't consider a retransmission and uh, the, the station transmit as long as there is one arrival in the buffer, yeah. and uh, the arrival is uh, IID, so it becomes an um, IID active across all the stations. Yeah. So, yes. So this is just to, to uh, provide an upper bound for this system. 
because if we do not consider about the retransmissions, the interbrand based station will be less active com uh, compared with the original systems. Some question on the which? On the question on the one? No. Well, there were many questions also during the talk. Thank you again.